our birthroom here. So if you want to come in here. So we have... Uh, my name is Gisela Becker and uh, I graduated from midwifery school in Germany, uh, which is my home country in 86. And uh, I moved to Fort Smith in 2000. My name is Leslie Paulette and I'm a midwife here in Fort Smith. I became interested in midwifery, I think, because it pulled together for me everything about who I was as an Aboriginal woman and what I felt I needed to be doing to help my own people. You know, it was, uh, it was about renewal, it was about renewing family and community and it was about empowering women and empowering families and healing and, yeah. So that, it just, it spoke to me and, and I've never been able to turn away from it since. Over time, uh, midwifery, traditional midwifery disappeared. In some places, people weren't actively discouraged from it. In other places, people perhaps were discouraged. You know, when you're just embracing, even though it hurts, and you're in pain, Some women were told that it was not safe to birth in the communities. What I was really scared about was not having a doctor that I knew. And, and that they need to go to the regional center to birth there, that they would put their lives and their babies' lives at risk if they stayed in the community. Uh, I remember feeling really scared. <laughs> scared and really not know, really not knowing what was going it on. It meant separation them. from family, from home. There is, oh, I'm missing And often kids. women had to, to leave sorry. little children you behind. Come here, please. And go on their own a month in advance. This is Rowan. How old are you? Three. So it's a difficult Three. situation for them that leads to loneliness, Three. separation, and anxiety and isolation for the women who have to go to a regional center. In 1993, Leslie started her midwifery practice uh, here in Fort Smith. Well, he looks bigger. He, he looks longer. Yeah. He looks, I don't know. When I came cooler, here, yeah. there he were no midwives here anymore. There had been traditional midwives in this community years before, but already by the time I arrived here, no one was doing that anymore. Anyways, let me see. Uh, Leslie uh, didn't ask for any payment from, from her clients. If people could give her something, that yeah. was fine. But if not, she still provided services. I just want to see how like a real. Oh, I got everything from uh, yeah. an old ringer washing machine to fresh baked bread. Yeah. I just I did it because I felt that the service was something that all women were entitled to, and I didn't want to set a differential kind of system where some could afford it and some couldn't. So it was it was just available to whoever wanted the service. Look at this one. And then Gisela did join me in 2000, right? yeah, to the year 2000, and, um, and so the population of midwives doubled in the community, and that was kind of a big event. But still we weren't recognized in the territory. There was opposition. Uh, the medical system wasn't convinced about it. The Department of Health was not ready to regulate it. It was an uphill battle. It was an uphill battle. I guess the biggest challenge we were up against was convincing the health system that having midwifery care here in this community and returning birth to the community was going to be an improvement over what they were offering. They had to be convinced that it was possible to screen women appropriately and do safe community birthing for those women who were appropriate. <laughs> Community support grew one birth at a time. People who, you know, enjoyed the experience of having midwifery care talked about it with other women, and so other women came and they said, I heard, you know, this is a pretty good thing and I'd like to try it, and so it just grew. And 
and uh, we had a whole group of women who supported uh, this effort. People said, yeah, why should we have to leave? It was a midwifery movement. And people recognized that, yes, this is, this is what we need again. I think the most wonderful thing about birthing close to home is uh, the family event. How much birth has become an event that the family can celebrate together. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's not a time of stress or separation for the woman. It's a time where she can work through this with her family, with friends, with the community. It's about birth just being part of family and community life, which is what it always has been, what it was always intended to be. And it's, for me, it's, it's really good to see that that full circle, we've come full circle again, and, and families have that opportunity. I think it's important for the community to celebrate birth and to have birth in the community. It's, uh, it's an important aspect in the life of a community.